Surprise Comics. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the C2E2 acetate cover because there has been a breaking announcement and a new development which is absolutely shocking. I don't think anyone really saw this coming um, where CGC has actually changed their stance on how they're going to grade this comic, uh, which I'm not sure it has is precedented in something at least as, as large scale as this. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do like a one minute breakdown of uh, how we got to where we are, just a one minute breakdown of what it is, the new breaking uh, announcement and what this means for us going forward and talk about some future implications and what to expect going forward. So the one minute breakdown of what happened, you guys are all probably very familiar with the situation. Black Flag Comics had an exclusive for Ultimate Fallout 4, the facsimile edition, and then they came out with an acetate cover version of that where they added after manufacturing an acetate cover. If you don't know what that is, an acetate cover is a plastic cover with art on it that kind of overlays and interacts with the cover underneath. Uh, they added that after manufacturing and CGC graded it as a blue label, which means it's universal grade, just a regular comic. And the community was outraged because it was added after manufacturing. And typically anything that's added after manufacturing gets something other than a 9.8, you know, perfect blue label book, qualified book, something to that effect. You guys know the rest of the story. There, it, It's been a complete uproar in the community ever since then. And so let's jump into the computer. I'll talk about the actual statements that CGC has made and the breaking announcement. All right, so shout out to Bronze and Modern Gods, okay, because uh, I'm getting all my information about this from Bronze and Modern Gods because they've done a great job of just updating on all of the posts and stuff, which is the number one question about this is why is CGC making all of their announcements and posts about this on a CGC chat board forum some guy named cgc mike who's an administrator i have no idea who cgc mike is uh, apparently he works at cgc but all of these updates are coming from chat messages on a chat board that many 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 people are not a part of or don't even know about i personally am very connected and i have no idea about this chat board i'm, I'm learning about it through social media which is the first weird thing about how they're choosing to address the community about this but um, as we can see, the first post that CGC publicly made about this came from whoever CGC Mike is, an administrator, and it says, uh, CGC is fully aware of what we graded and we stand behind them. This was a response to some other chat on the question. So when this first came out, I was really surprised. I was like, wow, I'm surprised that CGC actually is doubling down on the fact that they knew what they are. I thought maybe somebody, they just slipped this in, like they submitted these books to CGC and it just flew under the radar, like it was an acetate cover. Maybe they accidentally thought that it was approved by the publisher and that's why they graded them the way they did. But no, they said, we are fully aware of what we graded and we stand behind them. And the community at this point said, okay, well, great. At least we know that where they stand on this and, and how they're going to grade it. And then, uh, you know, the backlash just exploded, right? Everything just exploded about this. And then um, when there was a such uproar, CGC Mike comes again and says, hey, all, CGC will have a follow-up post regarding this tomorrow. So they realized that, you know, there needed to be, uh, you know, some kind of clarification on this to which CGC uh, actually clarifies and says, we feel it is important to provide transparency on how CGC arrived at our method of certifying Clayton Crane's ultimate fallout comics with the attached acetate covers. For us, this was an unprecedented item to grade. After Mr. Crane spoke with us prior to C2E2, the rules we applied to his books were that the additional cover had to be created by an established artist in the industry. The comic to which the cover was attached had to contain a cover by that same artist, and a copy of the comic with the attached cover had to be submitted to us for inspection prior to certifying any copies. So whether or not you think that this is true, whether or not you think they really had all of this conversation about this special book, that's up to you to decide. I kind of have a feeling that they just submitted it and that this is like just after the fact. I have no basis for saying that. It's just my personal opinion. I just think that this was an after the fact explanation of what happened. I think that Black Fag may have just submitted them as and put in the, the variant se uh, section acetate cover and, and that's why they graded them the way they did. Um, but I don't know that for sure. That's just my personal opinion. And it doesn't really matter at this point. So uh, here is the breaking 
news at this point, okay? This is the latest post. This is actually about eight hours ago now. CGC Mike posts here and says, we appreciate everyone being patient with our follow-up regarding the Clayton Crane acetate covers. After discussions this past week, CGC will assign a qualified signature series label to comics that contain an acetate cover by Mr. Crane, as well as his signature that has been witnessed by a CGC representative. So I don't understand why they're making such a big deal about the qualified signature series label. For those that don't know, a qualified signature series label is still a qualified label. It's, it's just, it has this, uh, this green bar at the top that says qualified grade, and then it goes on to signature series book. So I'm not sure why they're making a big to do about uh, being able to have it a uh, qualified signature series label. A uh, qualified signature series is still qualified, right? And so for those uh, that don't know, the qualified label is when it's a green label um, for various reasons. And I think almost unanimous, unanimously, everyone agrees that this book should have been created, graded with a green label. And in fact, going back to Bronze and Modern Gods over here, uh, they posted this a uh, statement that was made by uh, CBCS. At least CBCS did this on so on uh, on um, Instagram, which, which you know, and even referenced Acetate Gate hashtag Acetate Gate. Like they wanted it to be you know known in the community where they stand, rather than just posting on some unknown chat board somewhere and then relying on the community to spread the word. So CBCS considers any cover added post-manufacturing as a facsimile cover, regardless of their origin. And then they went on to say that it would max out at like a 7.0 or something like that. So in, in essence, it wouldn't be a blue label book. Um, and so uh, that's what's interesting about this. So now CGC is going on the record to say, we changed our minds. We are no longer going to give it a blue label. We are going to give it a, a qualified label, which is the exact opposite of what they said when they first came out and said, we know exactly what we graded and we stand behind it. All right. So they no longer stand behind it. They have completely changed midstream and are uh, going to give this the, the appropriate qualified label because a cover was added after manufacturing without the publisher's approval. Okay. So, um, the grade assigned, that goes on to say here, the grade assigned will take into consideration the grade of the acetate cover as well as the interior book. And I want to pause right here because this is incredibly important. I wonder why did they put this? Why did they say the grade assigned will take into consideration the grade of the acetate cover as well as the interior book? Because when I first, w when this first happened and we found out that CGC graded these, here you can see on the census, the Black Flag Edition acetate artist cover that there's five nine eights four nine nines and one ten point oh and people were like how did these get those grades and i thought what do you mean how did they get those grades an acetate cover they graded the cover and not the interior of the comic and of course you can get a nine nine and a ten on a plastic acetate cover it's really easy to keep that absolutely perfect and then somebody in one of my whatnot streams said uh shout out to scott said they're supposed to grade the entire book and i was like whoa that's blowing my mind because when you look over here black flags edition for the facsimile 84 9.8s, no 99s and 10s. And if you look at the Virgin Edition, 109, 9.8s, no 99s and 10s. And the regular facsimile edition, 1684, 9.8s, zero 9.9s and 10s. It's almost impossible to get a 9.9 or a 10 with these super cheap Marvel paper quality facsimile edition comics. So it's clear that the reason these got 99s and 10s is they just graded the outside cover, not the interior of the book. But here on their statement, they're now saying the grade assigned will take into consideration the grade of the acetate cover as well as the interior book. All right. So what this means is that most, most, if not all, it will be incredibly rare to get one of these, you know, acetate covers. Ultimate Fallout 4 is graded in a 99 or a 10. There will probably be no more 99s or 10s. Now, what I want to say on this, my two cents, is this does not mean that these books right here, the, these 9.9s and 10s, the, the four that are 9.9s and the 110, it does not mean that the value of these should go up. We as a community need to accept that these blue label books right here are not 
genuine, okay? They are not, they should not be more valuable now because of all this controversy and because they're not going to do this. These books very well, the 9.9s and 10s, and even the 9.8s for that matter, very well could be recalled from CGC, all right? And that should not increase the value of this book. Do not be the guy that pays an absurd amount of money for this book, okay? This is not a valuable book. I think the one thing that we, we can, you know, I say that, but value is really predicated upon what somebody's willing to pay for it. So I guess if somebody's willing to pay $2,000 for a 9, 9, or 10, then that's what it's worth by the very nature of the definition of what something is worth is what somebody's willing to pay. I'm just saying you should not pay that for this book because even CGC is going on record to say that these should not be 9.9s and 10s. We are changing our grading standards for these, and we are going to now consider the grade of the assay cover as well as the interior of the book. So that's why it's very important to state that it does not mean that the value of the 9.9s and 10s should go up. It means that those should be recalled because they're absolute garbage and they're not real. They're not genuine. They should be recalled. They should be given a qualified label and a 9.8 at best. So here it goes on to say, for members who have already submitted copies of the ultimate fallout uh, issue to CGC, we will extend an opportunity to have Mr. Crane's signature applied to these copies so they receive the qualified signature series label. Again, I don't understand that why they're making such a big point about having a signature series qualified label. Of course, you can have anything signature series. Um, if a copy does not exhibit Mr. Crane's witness signature, the book will receive a qualified grade. All right. Going forward, CGC will only certify artist created covers that are first approved by CGC and those covers must be signed by the artist through the signature series program to receive the qualified signature series label. The cover must be created by a published artist. All right. So there you go. So going forward, they're still going to do these, but they're going to get qualified labels. Okay, so no more uh, 9.9s or 10s for these acetate cover books. All right, so there you have it, guys. So what can we expect going forward? Well, uh, they have already graded other copies of similar acetate cover books for Black Flag Comics. There's two more uh, editions of this. There's a Deadpool edition, and I forget what the other one was. Black Flags has stated that they're going to release those at Comic Cons in the future. Uh, we'll see if they actually do that after all of this outrage. Uh, we don't know for sure. Um, but CGC has already graded those as well as 9.8, 9.9s, and 10s. So it is possible that you know all of them get recalled. That is potentially uh, possible, especially since uh, Black Flag has not sold them yet. I would not be surprised if they recall them from Black Flags and say, hey, we got to give these a, a green label. There's too much of an uh, uh, uproar in the community. And personally, I think that that absolutely should happen. I think that Black Flag absolutely should not release those blue label CGC books. I think they should be completely transparent with what they did. I think they should consider not even releasing them at all just because of the stink that this has put in the community. I mean, clearly it is not received well, okay? And we'll see what happens. I have a feeling that they are gonna release them. He's gone, he, I saw you know a Facebook Live that he did we're talking about all the money that he has tied up in them. So I, I would expect that you know he probably will try to release them unless there's a compelling reason for him not to. So that said, going forward, if you buy any of those uh, exclusives, you know, wherever you buy them at the con or in the secondary market, if you submit them to CGC, they will be a green qualified label. I want to know I, I, what you guys think in the comments. Is this a win for the community? I feel like it is a win. I feel like it's a win for the community that the community was outraged and CGC actually listened and changed their policy on this at the expense of having an egg on their face, right? Like they have, by, by stating that they're changing their stance, they're admitting that their original stance was completely uh, inconsistent with, you know, the comic book community and other grading companies and grading standards, their own grading standards in the past. So I think it's a win that they this, this issue has become big enough and important enough in the community that they're actually changing their stance. And I think that's a win for everyone because it just means that we can maybe finally put all of this behind us. They're not going to do this silly, stupid grading thing with acetate covers. Nobody has to think, oh, I can just slap an acetate cover on, on my book now and it'll get you know a 9.9 .9 or a 10. Um, I think that that is all behind us now, that they are no, they're going to grade not only the cover, but the interior 
interior book, so nine nines and tens are way less likely. It has to be uh, an established artist in the industry, and it's going to get a qualified label. Nobody wants a qualified label. So I don't think shops are going to be like chomping at the bit to do their acetate cover. I think you would be it would be in really poor taste if anyone did an acetate cover after this. Like. I think that would be in really poor taste. Just just let that gimmick die, right? Like it has caused too much of a stink. Um, and I think that this is a step in the right direction that hopefully we can all move forward from this. I'm really curious to see what you guys think in the comments. I'm curious to see how this all shakes out. Uh, thank you for, for uh, sticking with me to the end of the video. Uh, sorry for the format, the late post, uh, but I wanted to get this out there um, and uh, I appreciate all of you and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Bryce Comics.